Thank you guys for joining me today. This video will be different from the norm because as you can tell, I'm doing some narration today. I usually like to type out everything I have to say because I want my videos to be accessible to all people. But this video is pretty lengthy, so I felt the voiceover was more appropriate. I will be unboxing my Ionia ear today and giving you a full review. I received my Ionia 2 on September the 9th after participating in the initial Indiegogo campaign. I purchased two Ionia ears in the configuration 16GB RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD. This device has a Ryzen 5560U processor and is a Steam Deck alternative. What I mean by Steam Deck alternative is this is a small handheld PC, the smallest of its kind so far running Windows 11. The Air can play light to medium heavy duty games while sporting a 1920 by 1080 OLED display. The Air wasn't made to be a robust handheld when handling graphically intensive games or battery life. I will review the Ionia Air based on my use case and why I like it. After this initial thought, I will not compare it against the Steam Deck in any shape or form. <gasps> Bruh! because this is not a Steam Deck clone. The Steam Deck crushes the Ionia Air in almost every category possible other than aesthetics, size, and screen quality. Unlike DPD devices, the Ionia devices not specific to the Air use eye space to handle mouse controls and TDP settings. I usually didn't tweak the power settings until I got a GPD Win 3 because there just wasn't a way for me to tweak these things easily before having that device. It became significantly easier once I had the Ionia Ear because of the Ionia button. The hardware switch the GPD devices have to switch between mouse and controller controls is impressive and my favorite thing about GPD products is that feature. Since the Ionia Ear naturally doesn't have mouse input and is controlled by IS space, there's been instances where the software would give out and not work on certain video games. I got around this by installing Rewads. It's a paid program, but it allows you to map controls on various controllers and map different shortcuts to individual buttons. It reminds me of Steam and how you can easily map keyboard controls to buttons on the Steam Deck. I could have used Steam for this as well. Still, I feel Rewads has better features and that feels like a smoother product than the Steam option on non-Steam Deck handhelds paying for it since it has a lifetime license. I set up my controls to work very similar to the GPD's mouse controls and I made it so that you could switch between controller and mouse by holding on the select button for three seconds so that it doesn't conflict with video games. I like to play my games in handheld mode and that's just who I am. I was never really a big fan of playing on my TV. I even sold my PS5 and Xbox Series S before my Ionia Ear arrival because all the games I played on my PS5 were either on slash coming to the PC, which is my preferred platform. I would rather play on a handheld via remote play than the actual console when using my PS5 or Xbox. Getting the Air has helped me become a minimalist in gaming devices. I only switch between that and my Steam Deck. My Switch has not been used since owning the Air but I still love it. Another way I have been using my ear for the last month has been with my portable display. I usually wouldn't dock my mini PCs, but I have come to a point where I can't play video games all day. As a digital artist, I'm constantly creating new things, and it's nice to quickly plug my idea into my portable display and use my foldable keyboard with it. Whether coding, creating digital illustrations, or watching videos, I can switch between a small handheld or a mobile workstation in under a minute with this device. You can do this too with the Steam Deck and other handheld PCs, but the Air is very portable compared to the Steam Deck, and since it runs my preferred OS natively, I enjoy the flexibility it gives me. I find that the Air feels like a well-made device. It feels of really good quality and not cheap at all. I also love the use of hall sticks used in the device. It's the first time I tried hall sticks, but I'm pleased that hall sticks mean that you should never experience controller drip. I was always wary about handhelds without detachable controllers due to the possibility of drip, which was my main reason for getting the original Switch. I preferred the size of the light, but was scared because of the controller drip. The Switch sticks suffer from drip a lot. After having the air for almost 3 months, I can give it a true review of its durability. 
Since the device has a soft plastic feel, it can be easily scratched and placed in tight pockets without a case. I got two little scuffs on the trigger bar area on the device and a scratch on the bottom of the device. I would highly suggest investing in a small case to keep it safe if you decide to take it anywhere. This is the cutest PC handheld I ever seen. Trill the Air comes in this beautiful Sakurai pink color. It also comes in white, the color I got my fiance, black, beat up yellow, and gray, and retro color power. The Air easily wins for having such an excellent quality OLED display while being amazingly cute simultaneously. I also love the device's proper cover over the micro SD slot. The Air feels like a high quality device. The box presentation and the overall unboxing feel like an Apple device. The speakers could be better, but if you download FX Sound on the Air, it's a free PC application and adjusting the speakers to your liking helps give the device a better overall volume. I expected the Air's battery to be weak since it's so tiny and only 28 watts hour for the standard Air model, but I'm surprised by how short it is sometimes. I'm generally near a plug, so I rarely run into an issue of it dying on me, and I can't get what I'm doing done. But it's still a little shocking how fast the battery will die if I'm playing a power hard degree game. I get a decent battery life when I play lighter games like Spirit Fearer or Ooblets. I'll play those games at 8 watts max and I'll play, and play at the native 1920 by 1080 display. I can play those games for close to one hour and a half without plugging it in. When I play more power intensive games like Final Fantasy 7 Remake, I had to use a lower power setting and a higher TDP, such as 15 watts or 12 watts to get the best performance under an hour of battery life. For example, in Fall Guys, I have to run 12 watts to get the best performance with battery with pretty standard graphics so that I will average 40 to 50 minutes of battery life. That doesn't bother me like I said, since if my device dies, I'm generally in an area to plug it in. But also, when I carry my ear outside, I'll make sure to bring a portable charger with me and I'll have no issue having all day battery life. With that being said, I rarely take my ear outside because I'm too busy to use it. If my ear dies while I'm using it, I'll usually take that as a sign to do something else with my life. My final thoughts is, I like the Ionia Ear and I'm happy I bought the device. I will only upgrade my Ionia Ear to a different device if Arthur, the CEO of Ionia, comes out with a significantly better ear to in pink, or another aesthetically pleasing color, or if I get my hands on a cheap B-Duck Ionia 2 if my ear breaks. This device has enough battery and power for my regular usage, and when I'm using it for heavier attacks, I always have it plugged in. The Air is a great device to have, and if you want the smallest portable PC, it's the best, cheapest one you can get. Thank you for joining me today, and then remember to like this video if you want more content like this. Leave comments in the comment section below if you prefer what I talk or type during my videos, or both. I still like typing, but I will do whatever I feel is appropriate for the video. Bye-bye!